In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a rig for a camera in Cinema 4D using Expresso. I'm going to look at a few ways of using it and make some adaptions along the way. So let's just dive straight in. Before we do that, however, just click on that little subscribe button below. First of all, add a camera, zero out the coordinates, then hold down all and add in four nulls. And we're going to name those for the camera name, heading, pitch and bank. Then select the camera, hold down shift and add in another null. And let's name this focus. We're going to use this for focusing. Select the top null, come down to the attribute and choose add user data. This will open up the user data manager. The first one we're going to call pivot heading. We're going to set the interface to be a float slider. And if we click on the example tab at the top, we can see down the bottom an example of what our user data will look like. We're going to use degree as our units. Let's set the minimum here to be minus 720, um, but the minimum on the slider to be minus 180 and the limit max to be plus 720 and then the slider max to be plus 180. Now take that, duplicate it twice. Let's call the second one pivot pitch and then finally pivot bank. Now take all three of these and can hold down control and duplicate those and change the name pivot to camera. Added another user data item. This one I'm going to call camera Z depth. Once again, use a float slider for the interface and the unit will be real. And this is how far we want to pull the camera back from the pivot point or in front of it as if we were making a jib. Set the min to minus 50,000 and the slider min to minus 5,000. And then for the max, I'm going to set 10,000 and the slider max. I'm just going to set that to zero for now. Finally, set the default value there to be minus 2,000. Add another user data element and this we're going to call focal length. And we're going to use this to control the camera focal length rather than switching to the camera each time. We're going to use float slider with a real unit. And let's set the min to be one. Not that you're likely to use a one mil lens. And we can set the slider to be eight mil. Um, let's set a max of 2000 super telephoto and let's set the slider max to say 200 mil and we'll have a default value of 35. Now we've got that done we can okay this and there we go you can see all those user data elements but what we can do is we could actually organize them a bit better so let's come back to our user data choose manage user data click to add a group and let's rename that camera controls. Now if we select all of our user data elements we can drag them into that group then if we just fold that group and uh, take it out of the user data, when we press OK now and we come back to our interface, you can see that we now have a tab called camera controls. If you hold shift and click on coordinates, we can see that tab as well. And what will happen is when we adjust these sliders, we will link that to the parameters on our camera and we can easily select them, right click and choose reset to default to reset them to the default values we set up. Next, come up to the root null and add an espresso tag. You can always press Shift C and type espresso if your menu is different. Then drag the root null into the espresso window along with the child nulls for heading, pitch, and bank. And we're also going to drag the camera itself into that window. Next, you need to add output ports for the camera controls we just created. So add a port for the pivot heading, pivot pitch, pivot bank, and all of the other user data elements that we created. Finally, add an output for the name from the basic properties menu. That will allow us to use the name of our root null to rename the camera. Next, we link the user data pivot heading, pitch and bank into the cam H, cam P and cam B nulls. And we need to link them to the rotation heading, pitch and bank in each of those nodes. Resize the camera node. And now what we need to do is link the camera heading, camera pitch and camera bank user data into the camera rotation heading, pitch and bank. The camera Z depth output needs to be wired into the camera position Z. We also need inputs on this camera node for the position X and Y and also the focal length found under object properties and the name which is under the basic properties menu. Now wire across the focal length and the name into the appropriate input ports. Next right click choose new node Espresso general constant and we're going to have a constant value of zero and we're going to link that into the camera position X and why and that means that we won't be able to move the camera away from that pivot point um, so if we do try to move it it will jump back 
Now, if you close the Espresso tag, come back up to the Object Manager and select the root null, switch over to Camera Controls and try messing around with the sliders. And you can see that as we adjust those, it should indeed um, affect the um, various rotation points and angles of our camera rig. And you can see that as I'm adjusting each one of these sliders, it's adjusting our camera heading, pitch, bank, pivot, heading, pitch, bank, etc. We can even adjust the focal length down here. If we select all those, right click, choose reset to default, and we're back where we started. Now let's set the focus. And as you can see, if I grab and move this, it doesn't do anything at the moment. We just need to link that into the camera. So select the camera. Under the object tab, you can see we've got this field for the focus object. Just drag and drop that null into there. As soon as you do that, you can see that it updates in the viewport. And now when we drag that focus point up and down, it affects the actual focus of our camera. Just reset that to 2000. Now, if you come back up to the root null and um, rename this, remember that we linked the name of this object to the name of the camera as well. That's pretty handy. It just means that you can fold that group when you're working and change the name and the camera name will update accordingly. And now we've built the basic rig. I'm just going to copy that, jump into a new scene. And you can see in here, I've got this head with all of these wires, but feel free to use any model of your own. I'm going to paste the camera into this scene, make it the active camera and switch so I can see all four views. Positioning the camera where you want it to be may not be as intuitive as you're used to when you're tumbling around the viewport using your keyboard shortcuts. But you could think of this as if you have a camera on a tripod or a dolly or a jib. You can see I've moved the camera closer on Z, actually adjusted the pivot point in the viewport and also adjusted the pivot heading. Once you're happy with the framing, jump to the beginning and add a key for the pivot heading and then jump to the end of your sequence, rotate around and add another key. You can ignore the redraw that I have on mine. There's just a problem on frame zero. Next, go into the timeline. I just select those keys and press Alt L to make it linear. We don't want to be worrying about any F curves for this example. Scrub through and have a look. Now let's animate the pitch. So select the camera under the camera controls. Let's set the pivot pitch to a minus value minus 16, add a keyframe, jump to the end and let's take that into a positive value. We can easily come back and adjust these. Um, let's add another key. And once again, I'm going to set this curve to be linear. Now, if we scrub through, you can see not only do we rotate around, but there is also movement from top to bottom. Next, let's add some animation to the camera's Z depth. So at the beginning, I'm gonna just push in a little bit closer. Okay, you might need to adjust the Y position of the camera object or the, the camera null, should I say. Add a key for that and jump to the end and then let's just pull out so we are a little bit further away and then add another key. If you switch to the coordinates tab and hold shift, you can show both camera controls and coordinates. So now we can scrub our position Y value and frame the shot how we like. Um, add a key. Let's come back to the beginning and then just reframe by adjusting the Y position once again. And you guessed it, we're going to come back into our F curve manager, show all of those curves. You can press S or H to show selection and then Alt L to make those linear again. And now you can see as well as rotating around in two directions, we're also pulling away from the subject. The great thing about this setup is because we have each of those animation tracks on separate objects rather than animating everything on the camera itself, very easy to come in and adjust them. So if, for example, we want to adjust the heading, we can come here and just adjust this key and we can rotate around so that we see more of a profile shot. If we need to adjust the beginning, the same, we just select the key and adjust the curve like so. If we come to our pitch, we can do the same thing. We can make it so that it starts a little bit lower down and at the end, maybe it doesn't come quite as low so that we're a bit more straight on to our subject. As I said, if you did this with a regular camera, it would be an absolute nightmare to try and make these changes without it affecting the um, complete animation path. We can do the same with our Z depth. Maybe we want to take that, choose key, mirror X. And now instead of pulling away, we push inwards. And we just literally flip that curve to do that. And we can do the same with our Y. We could flip it or we could just adjust this and reframe it nice and easily. So hopefully you can see the power of using a rig like this rather than using a camera on its own. 
now we've built this rig and had a little bit of an exploration of how to use it let's come back to the rig itself and add a new feature and then let's explore some other ways of using it back in the original file select that root camera null and then choose user data manage user data select the camera controls group and add data I'm going to choose boolean as the data type so essentially it's just a checkbox I'm going to call this use target we're going to adapt the espresso so that we can use a target tag or we can use the camera heading rotation controls so we're going to need to switch between those two controllers under our controls we've now got this checkbox that we can use um, we need to link that into our espresso so open the espresso window before we make any changes in here we're going to add a target tag to our camera we also need an object to use as the target object. Hold down control and drag the focus null to become a child of our camera and rename this target. Select the target tag and drag that target null into the target object field in the attribute manager. In the Espresso window, delete the connection between the camera heading pitch and bank and the rotation on the camera. We're going to split that out to a separate node so that we can easily enable and disable that node. So drag the camera back into the Espresso window and add the outputs for camera heading, pitch and bank and also use target, which is our new user data. Next, drag the camera in and add the inputs for the rotation, heading, pitch and bank. And also the node has an input port for on. This allows us to switch this node on or off depending on whether it receives a zero or a one, which we can trigger through a Boolean. Next, drag the target tag into Espresso and add the enable input port. Next, we're going to wire up the user data camera heading pitch and bank into the camera rotation as before and link the use target Boolean into the enable on our target tag. Add a new node, Espresso Bool Not and link the use target through the not node and into the on switch on our camera node. The not node basically negates the boolean value so when we check use target it's going to switch on the target tag and switch off the camera node. To check that this is working close the espresso make sure that the use target checkbox is unchecked. Now select the target null and move it around the viewport. You should see that it's not working now if you come back to the camera null and check the checkbox to use target then move the target around you should see that now the camera does indeed follow that target now uncheck use target and adjust the sliders to make sure it's working now i'm going to undo that copy the camera rig jump into a new scene in this scene we have this vehicle which has got a basically a linear path along this straight road. I want to look at a couple of shots that we could create using this rig just to explore the versatility of the setup. First of all, I'm going to paste the camera rig in and drop it into the Mercedes group and zero that out. So basically the camera pivot point is in the same position as the main null for our Mercedes. Bring the pitch so the camera is a little bit higher and adjust the Z depth so it's closer. Switch over to the camera view itself. Now we can use the heading to rotate around and possibly grab the axes, and pull that up so that the whole group is a little bit higher within the vehicle. Next, I'm just gonna make a few small adjustments just to reframe this. But of course, as you know from the previous shot, it's pretty easy to come back and adjust. So I'm more or less happy with this. I wanna start at the front of the vehicle and as we drive along, um, rotate around so then we follow it towards the end so rewind to the beginning let's add a key for the pivot heading and the camera z depth i'm also going to change the focal length so it's just a little bit wider 28 mil now as we scrub through you can see it's pretty boring at the moment because obviously um, it's perfectly static with the movement of the car but at this point i'm going to pull out a little bit more and just rotate around so that we can see the side of the vehicle a little more add some more keys for those and then let's scrub through so we're about two thirds of the way through. At this point, I want to be almost behind the vehicle. I'm going to rotate around to add another key and start to pull back a little bit more. Let's add one more key now and then let's scrub all the way through to the end, at which point I want to be fully behind the vehicle and quite a long way back. OK, so don't want to see that street light. OK, let's add keys for those and notice that I'm not adjusting any of the F curves I'm just leaving these on the default settings and um, we're really just blocking out this kind of camera move like a previous for a project but it does give you a good insight of how we can use this setup 
I'd like to use the target for this. So I'm going to select the target now and just reset the position of that. So it's back at the same position as the root. If we come through to the middle here, one of the problems is that you can see the vehicle itself is in the dead center i'm going to enable target now if we grab that and move it you can see that we can move that backwards and forwards and adjust the position of our subject within the frame which is going to make it a bit more interesting it feels very sterile when that subject is in the very dead center of the shot i position the target near the front of the vehicle and added a key on the position z now if we move towards the center of the sequence let's pull that target back a bit and add another key now you can see that as we scrub through the vehicle starts on the left and heads towards the center of frame and as we come past that intersection we can pull that target back and add another key which will push the vehicle over towards the right of the frame so it feels as if it's traveling across the shot rather than sitting in the middle throughout the whole sequence it's a subtle difference, but these kind of differences will take your camera moves from feeling mechanical and automatic to um, feeling a little bit more human and organic. The next shot that I want to do is in the same scene, but rather than being inside the car, let's delete this rig from inside the car. I'm going to paste in the original camera rig and place it on the pavement so we can set up a shot of the vehicle driving by. First of all, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and then I'm going to pull it over so it's sitting in the middle of this island um, on this side road. Next thing I want to do is I want to position the camera so instead of being in negative values on the Z depth, it's positive. So it sits in front of the pivot point. To do this, we need to open up our user data and adjust the maximum slider value. We could type that in manually, but it's just going to be easier if we can do it on the slider. So now you can see I can push it forward in front of the pivot point. I'm going to set the camera Z depth to be 200 and also adjust the focal length so it's a bit of a wider lens. Let's use 28 mil. The other thing I'm going to do is raise the whole rig up by changing the Y position and I'm going to set that to be 170 centimeters. So it's kind of more or less the height of someone's eyeballs. I've also enabled the target option and then dragged the target null and made it a child of the Mercedes group. We can now position that, switch back to our camera view, and of course the camera is now pointing directly at that vehicle. As we scrub through, we see we get the same problem that we had before, that the vehicle is pretty much dead center. As it passes by, it's much too close to the camera, so I'm going to switch to my top view here and just pull the whole rig back a little bit so that we have framed that vehicle a bit nicer. Rewinding to the beginning of the sequence, I'm going to not only adjust the, um, the camera heading using the target, but I'm also going to adjust the pivot heading. So it's almost like the whole rig swivels around slightly, which will create a small amount of parallax. You probably won't notice it too much, but it will make the shot feel a little bit more organic, almost as if someone's holding the camera as they swivel their body as well as the camera itself. As we scrub through, I'm going to adjust this pivot heading so that we pivot around as the vehicle goes past and then towards the end I'm just going to add a few more degrees on there just so we keep that movement going okay I'm just going to adjust the camera to move it forward a little bit as well and you can see as I scrub through in the top view that we get this big swivel occurring maybe we make the camera a little bit wider and there we go, and you can see that's feeling pretty good. Now we've got that basic move blocked out, we can adjust our target. So I'm going to do that in the top view, and I'm going to just pull that target so it's quite away in front of the vehicle, which is going to push that vehicle towards the right of the frame. Let's add a key for position Z, and I might just bring those keys back in time a little bit. And then scrub through and you can see that now the vehicle is well over to the right of the frame but let's just keep going and as it passes us we can adjust the position of that target once again and pull it so it's actually behind the vehicle this time and um, once again add a key for the position z and now you can see okay so we've been a bit drastic there i'm just going to pull that key across okay and now you can see the vehicle isn't quite dead center and it sort of crosses through the frame as it did in the previous example. So the combination of that swivel and the target adjustment just makes the whole shot feel a bit more natural and less automated. Final thing I want to do in blocking out this shot is also adjust the actual position of the camera pivot itself and we can adjust the position X as if it was on a dolly um, as we go through that shot. So if we just come right way back to the beginning 
um, maybe yeah, actually to frame zero. And let's just push the camera a bit towards those uh, barriers, say minus 200. I'm going to add a key for the position X. Now let's jump to the end and let's just set that to be 200. So now we're closer to the barriers on the opposite side. That small adjustment is just going to give us a small amount of movement there. You can see the vehicle passes by and we just keep on moving forward. So it just adds another layer of interest to the shot. And of course we're blocking this out. We could spend a lot more time, um, but hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you could use this rig for these kind of shots. The next thing we're going to do is come back to our rig and we're going to make one more change to it because at the moment we've got this switch that switches between our target and our camera heading pitch and bank but really the target tag itself only controls the heading and the pitch when we enable the target the bank doesn't do anything if we look at the tag you can see we've got the control for pitch um, which we're going to leave checked so I'm just going to come back into the Espresso window and here I want to take this camera bank, take it away from these two nodes and add it into this top setup as it was before. So now when we switch between use target or not, it won't affect the banking of our camera and we can still use this. Now we've made that change, we can just make sure it works. And there we go, we've got the banking working with the target, come to a new scene and we're going to have a look at one more example of how we could use this rig. I'm just going to reset these parameters and set that target back to its original position, copy the whole rig and jump into a new scene. Here in this new scene you can see that I've got a couple of Quixel mega scans but you could do this if you wanted to practice just by having a whole bunch of cylinders within a cloner. Um, I'm going to create a spline, I'm going to use B spline just so we don't have to worry about the tangents of the Bezier. And I'm just going to click through and create a rough sort of path that we can use for our camera. Once you've made that, um, I'm going to make the spline uniform um, and just increase the number of intermediate points so it's slightly smoother. Let's switch this landscape back on so we can see the floor. And now you can see we've got a spline which is going to be our rough path. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to adjust that now. Maybe we can move it up or down a little bit. Next, let's paste in the camera rig, right click on the camera and choose align to spline. Drag that spline we've created into the spline path and you can see already that our camera has aligned to that spline. I'm going to create a keyframe for the beginning and end, 0 to 100% on the position and then in the f-curve change that to linear interpolation by selecting it and pressing alt l. Now we could have just put the aligned spline straight on a camera but this gives us a lot more opportunity to deviate from that path and add in our own variation and um, adapt the move with a lot more flexibility. I will however bring the camera a lot closer to the null, let's say Z depth of around minus 300 and also make the focal length a bit wider. We can adjust the pitch to lift the camera up very slightly but probably we should switch to the camera point of view at this point and just have a quick scrub through and see what we've got. So you can see obviously the camera is moving dead straight um, and we could use tangential in the align to spline but I'm going to adjust the pivot heading. I'll add a key for this and I'm going to switch back to my um, key mode, find the key for this. And I just think I'll move that down a little bit. We are blocking this out so we can easily adjust this as we go. You can see that as we come along, I'm going to just adjust the heading and then add in another key, scrub through. Once again, adjust the heading to the opposite direction. And this is going to give us a nice swing as we go around these corners. And you note that I'm just doing the heading first and I'll come back and add in more details later. Those keys just need shifting down slightly. There we go. Okay, so let's keep going and then that looks good. Come a bit further, swing that camera around again by selecting my camera and adjusting the heading. Hopefully you get the idea. Let's keep going. And this is very crude at the moment but it will allow us to easily come back and adjust the angles, add some extra pitch. We can move the height of it up and down easily. Um, gives us a lot of flexibility overall. 
that's the final adjustment to this let's just add another key come back to the beginning and let's just have a look at that simple animation so far so everything's all on the same level we are passing through a rock there but we can we can work on that let's come back to the beginning hide the spline now i'm going to work on the pitch so let's just bring this up very oh ooh, what should we do up a little bit i am making this up as i go along so bear with me um let's come to more or less this first corner just before it add a key for our pitch we're going to use this just to sort of go up and over any rocks that are in the way uh, like here maybe we just want to rise it up a tiny bit and again now maybe we come back down it's going to give us a little bit of a roller coaster ride it's going to be more interesting than if we just stuck it on that spline Okay, I'm just going to keep the value the same there. But then as we come around here, I'm going to lift it up and over this rock just so we don't pass through. More or less it. And then right at the end here, I think I'll just bring that back down so it's a bit more level. So now we've got our heading and pitch in place. You can see that the camera move is starting to take place. It's looking okay. Cool stuff. Of course, at the moment, everything's pointing towards the dead center and we can switch our target on to um, help manipulate that. So now let's grab our target. We can switch to our world axes. Now we can adjust which direction the camera is pointing. So not only is it going to move up and down and move from left to right, we can adjust the angle or the direction that we're pointing. So let's pull that up a bit. And we can start to keyframe the x position okay maybe pull it across this is just going to add a little bit more twist as we come round these corners and i'm going to repeat that process as we go through just moving it so that we've got a bit more swing from left to right as we pass around all of these narrow bends and corners Coming into the last corner here, let's push that over again to the left. Keep going. And then once again, pulling it across to the right. Pretty straightforward stuff, but you can see it does create a nice, interesting motion for our camera. I'm just going to do one pass on these as well. I'm not going to do any adjustments and manipulations. So this really is blocking out. On this pass, I'm going to adjust the Y position so that the camera can point up and down. And the great thing is that each of these tracks is independent. So we have full control over all of these and we can adjust any of them at any point. Okay. Bear with me on this. It is taking a few minutes to do, but we really are going to block out this whole camera move within a matter of four or five minutes um, from no camera traveling through this canyon to a roller coaster ride in just a few minutes. And we're going to rise up above this rock, so let's look up where we're going. Up we come, and then we come down the other side, so we're going to look down again. There we go. Maybe we just level that out or just leave it all right so now you can see the camera move is looking pretty sweet we're not looking at the dead center all the time now it's deviating from that central point which does make it more interesting as we adjusted the rig it would be rude not to do some bank we could do it with the camera bank i'm going to do it with the pivot bank in this example um there we go i think in this example it doesn't make much difference where you do it but with some setups it will which is why i wanted to add in that adjustment last time and here you can see i'm being rather extreme with these settings you know going very fast and he's quite a rad camera operator really going for it around these corners hopefully you get the idea almost done 
and you can see that we've created a pretty interesting move very quickly great for previews and you could take this and refine it and refine it um, until you have the desired result so now i've done that rewind and let's just have a look at what we've got and there you go so of course it's pretty crude at the moment i reckon it's a pretty good start and that's just another way of using this rig. So hopefully this tutorial has shown you a lot of opportunity with using this rig. You can download the actual rig from hellolux.com or if you a game, go through and build it yourself. And if you like this tutorial and want to see more of these, please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.